Barry Wilson, Wilson Auto Repair. We do lots of inspections on vehicles that people purchase and they're not really sure about what kind of condition they're in and they want these cars, these older classic cars to be dependable. So I always tell them that you want them to be able to start them every month if that's your routine to go out and use them. And certainly if you go out in the garage and it doesn't start, uh, you kind of get a little bit frustrated and uh, pretty soon you start stacking Christmas boxes on them because you can't use it. So we try to get past that for them and make sure that everything's fixed right, make sure it's working well, make sure it's dependable so they can enjoy it on Saturday night to go get ice cream or go out to dinner. Part of that for us is running a vehicle inspection. It takes about five hours for us to do it. And we look it over real thoroughly, give our customers a list of what we do. And then at that point, once they've seen that, uh, they usually ask for an estimate which, estimate, which we provide. And then from there, we move forward to do the work. So today we're gonna to talk about the basics of what we look at. So you get an idea, not only for what we might do, but what you might want done for your car someplace in another state uh, to make sure that that car that you just bought at an auction or from an individual is in good shape. So let's get going here. First of all, the first thing we're gonna look at is some electrical stuff. Here's the battery right here, and we're gonna look at the battery and make sure that it has good battery cable connections. A lot of these connections are cheap. They have little bolts here that hold the cable in or the cable's frayed. You can see in in this case, these cables are in good shape. The other thing that we see is multiple connections on the battery. We don't like that. We like to have an auxiliary post over here to hook up to if we're going to get power just directly off of the battery. This battery is in good shape, but look, it doesn't have a hold down. It doesn't have anything holding it in. Actually, it's there, but it's loose. So we want to be sure that that battery is not going to roll around and fall out while you're driving down the road. Then moving around, we would look at all the hoses on it, like we would look at the air conditioning hoses that doesn't have AC on this car, but these are the heater hoses that come off and go up to the heater cord. We're gonna look for leaks, and one thing we're gonna do is to make sure these hoses are pliable and it make sure that they don't leak. We'll put a pressure tester on the radiator, pump air into the radiator, let it set for a while, and make sure there's no leak on the radiator, and we're gonna examine uh, a good portion of the radiator to make sure that we don't see any green stuff in there that makes it look like it's leaking. This one has an electric fan on the front. We don't really like that. Uh, it doesn't seem to work very well. Pushers work a whole lot better than pullers. Next, we're gonna look at the belts, which is this belt right here. We're gonna flip that belt over. Let me get over here where I can do that. And we're gonna see if that belt has any cracks on it on the underside, or if it has excessive wear. We wanna make sure that it's lined up. That's another thing that we run into, that somebody's put an alternator on here, and the pulley doesn't line up with the next pulley, and then the belt starts running like this, and it's somewhat frays. And in this case, this one is just a little bit back, so that's something we'll note on our report to it. Right up here, you can see that there's just a, a whole bunch of wiring up here. Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Somebody just put something on here. You can see we got some mega fuses and we want to run all this down to make sure we know where this is going, what it's powering up, and how it's supposed to work so that we're sure that that is all done correctly. Uh, you can see right here, this, this cable right here had this plastic on it, but look, it's too close to the exhaust and it's melted it. So we're gonna have to figure out what's going on with that and find another way to route that around these headers. This car has fuel injection up here. So we would look at the uh, fuel injection system right here. And this is called a throttle body. It's by Phytech. And we would make sure that there are no leaks there. The other thing you can see, Daniel's already taken the distributor cap off there, that big round red thing. And let me get around there so I can look at it. Here to make sure that there are no burn spots on any of these contact points. And also on the ignition rotor back here uh, on the distributor to make sure that it's not burned up. These are real bad on these about burning right through the center where it contacts this. This looks like it's in pretty good shape. This We always call these HEI units. Then the other thing that we're going to look at is for leaks. We don't particularly see any serious oil leaks, but leaks that would be in any, any spot here where oil's running down. Look at the power steering system, make sure that it's not leaking. Make sure that the steering gearbox isn't leaking. Look at the body mounts down here to make sure that the, can you get a shot of that down there where the body mount actually mounts the car to the body. Look at the motor mounts, which we're gonna look at underneath in just a minute. And then we're gonna look at these bushings right here on the upper control arms. 
and these bushings are starting to crack. I don't know if you can see that well enough in the picture, but that usually leads to squeaking when you're hitting bumps and going up and down. So that would be something else we'd look at. We're gonna look at the uh, braking system. You can see that the master cylinder, which is this part right here, and it's the part that holds the fluid for the brakes. Uh, it's It's got a little bit of dampness around here, not a bad amount, but usually that means the seal right here is trying to leak. So we'll look at that. Uh, we'll look to make sure, and this in fact is leaking. If you look in the back of this right here, can you see that real well? That master cylinder is leaking out the back, and it's going to drain into the brake booster and eventually cause the brakes to fail because it'll run out of fluid and the brake booster is not going to work. So that's something that we look at right there. We're going to look at all the brake lines. Uh, normally, like this mess right here, we would try to get straightened out. That's something somebody just bent up and didn't do a very good job, and it doesn't look right, and it could be kinked right here. So we'd probably recommend replacing the steel brake lines. We'll look at the wiring up here, like I said, make sure everything works. We're going to check the wipers, the lights, the turn signals, the park lights. And now we're going to look underneath it and look at some of the things that we do there. Daniel, can you raise it up for us? So we're back and we're looking underneath this Camaro and you can see that this car has an oil leak and it looks like it's coming right out. This is the oil pan where the oil collects at the bottom of the engine and then it's pumped back through the engine. And you can see we have a leak here and it's so bad that it's run down on the steering system. This is the, the link that connects the tie rods to the gearbox, it's called a center link. So that would be something else we'd take a look at. The other thing we have to we, we look at is the motor mount. You can see this is where the motor is actually fastened to the frame. And it has a, it's made like a sandwich and it has a piece of rubber between two pieces of metal. And it's hard to see, but it, up in there, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. A motor mount on each side, right and left. While we're up here, let's just look at this steering. You can see that these, this is called the boot that holds the grease in for the tie rod end on both ends. And this is the adjuster that the alignment guy twists so that it, the wheels will move in and out so he can set the toe in. And we would usually take and twist it like this, and you can see how easily that twists, which means these are starting to wear out, these tie rod ends. So we'd recommend that he needs to replace those. This is a sway bar that kind of balances the car and keeps it from kind of getting loose when you go around curves. And if you can see, can you see this right here? That's the cracks in the bushing. They need to be replaced. And you can see these bushings right here are worn out. Look at the gap in there, and this bushing's old and rubber. It's starting to dry out on it. The ball joints are these two components right here and right here. You can see these boots aren't full, so that means it either needs to be greased or the ball joints are worn out. So we're going to take a look at that. And we're going to look right up here. You can see where the control arm hits the frame. That piece of rubber right there, we call the bump stops, worn out. Do we have a brake wheel? That off while we look. And over here at the steering gear box, you can see it's leaking power steering fluid. This is what comes out right here and moves back and forth like that and makes the steering wheel turn. Or the, this, when you turn the steering wheel, it makes the wheel turn. I'll get that straight. And this is leaking or fluid for the power steering, so we need to have that gearbox right here replaced. Now, if we look underneath it a little bit further, okay, getting under a little bit further, you can see just looking at this, look at all that grease coming off here. We got more leaks. Looks like the transmission is leaking. Let me just flip a light up here to see. This looks like this is pretty dry right here, but we got fluid leaking into the starter, so we need to check the starter to make sure it's not full of oil and going to fail on us. Looks like the exhaust is in pretty good shape. We're going to move on back a little bit. And this is the... Uh, Let's go around and shoot it from this angle. Okay, here we go. Now here's the here's the rear axle that attaches the drive shaft right here to the transmission. And when you turn the drive shaft like this, when it spins, it makes the wheels move using the gears that are inside of this. So we're gonna look at the springs and the spring mounts. They have bushings underneath them and they're old. Uh, we're looking at the, the brake lines. We'll open those up to check them. We're going to check this brake line right here, although it looks pretty new. We're going to look at the shock absorbers right here to make sure that they haven't lost their bounce. Uh, noticing that the exhaust all of a sudden looks pretty crusty right here. Um, and we're going to look at the fuel line. And then we're, the gas tank looks new, but we're going to look to make sure that it, it's not, see here, it looks like it's leaking. 
So we need to see what's going on with that. It may be that it's rusted inside. Somebody put some paint on it to cover that up and it's leaking fuel. So we want to see about that. And then we're going to look at the fuel lines off the gas tank going to the front of the motor. And then we're going to look at the brakes right here and make sure that this all looks smooth and not rough and make sure the brake pad up in here is good. These are disc brakes. They work like this. They clamp on the rust pits on this. So this isn't really good. We look at the thickness of these uh, right here to make sure there's thickness here and here. You get a shot of that right there. Make sure these are both thick. These are the vents to keep it cool. But we want to make sure this is thick. A lot of times these wear out on one side or the other and we need to replace these rotors. And But considering the fact that this is pretty rusty, I'd assume this probably needs to be replaced. Pressure test, which checks the pressure in each one of the cylinders of the engine. And T's going to stay here and take some pictures of Daniel doing that. And we'll add that to the video. And then hopefully we've helped you out quite a bit so you can uh, understand some things about your car and also understand some of the things that you maybe ought to have looked at before you go on that long trip in your car or just buy a car and make sure that it's going to be serviceable for you. I'm Barry Wilson with Wilson Auto Repair. If you want to see more videos like this, go to my website, wilsonauto.com. So when we check the motor, uh, we have to make sure that there is uh, oil pressure. So first thing, make sure there's actual oil in the engine. Second thing, uh, we put a uh, oil pressure gauge and we check that it has pressure uh, building up when we crank the engine. Um, if you're ready, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Oops, sorry. It's kind of in the way, I was like. Let's see if it'll get about well, it's 15 psi of pressure um, next thing we want to do is a compression test to make sure that the engine has compression that's where it'll start so we hook up this this gauge here and we do about the same thing so we do it about six seven times and uh, anything above 100, like this one has 150, um, it's kind of what you want. Um, anything better, more than that, it's good. <laughs> and that's about it for the. <laughs>